Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okey, bertemu lagi kita dalam bengkel uh, PAT uh, Perkongsian Amal Terbaik uh, Guru-Guru Malaysia. Uh, macam biasa, Guru. Sebelum kita teruskan kita punya bengkel kita pada petang ini, mari kita sama-sama membaca dulu surah Al-Fatihah. Al-Fatihah. Amin, 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 amin. Okey, yang kedua aku, uh, kita nak test dulu copong ni. Ha, copong tu bahasa tengah tu. Bahasa standardnya mikrofon. Ha, nak test copong ni berfungsi ke tak berfungsi. Uji yang suara 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ha, jika dengar kata dengar, jika clear, tulis clear. Jika jelas, tulis jelas dekat chatting itu. Okey aku, uji yang suara 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8 lagi. Okey aku. Okey, Cikgu Shima dari Kuantang Pahang. Uh, suara clear mulai. Cikgu Nur Azizah lep, benda? Jepas, lepas, benda apa tu? Clear, okey. Semua clear lah ke? Kita buat conclusion, semua clear. Okey, Cikgu yang kedua, Cikgu. Okey, selesai suara. Okey, kejap nak share kau ni. Okey, jika sekiranya, Cikgu, jika sekiranya Cikgu punya monitor itu Monitor itu kelabu kelala. Kelabu kelala tu kelabu tak nampak lah. Kelala tu bahasa tekanu. Kelabu kelala. Uh, gelak guguk. Uh, gelak tu gelak lah. Guguk tu bahasa tekanu. Gelak guguk. Tak nampak. Cikgu orang sehati. Tekan hajar dekat YouTube tu. Ada setting. Setting itu tekan ada kualiti. Ambil kualiti tu. Klik kualiti. Ambil nombor yang paling tinggi cikgu. 700. Uh, kalau cikgu punya tu ada yang HD. Uh, ambil yang HD. Uh, Nurse cahaya. Cikgu punya monitor itu akan terang benderang. Ha, jelas. Okey, selesai aku. Bawah ni aku ni dekat lelaki yang mengakas tajuk itu ada nama Dr. Saga. Nah, ada bahan. Bahan untuk petang ini. Dan bawah itu ada link CJ dan juga SPL. Ha, link sudah ada aku. Tapi link itu belum aktif. Dia akan aktif selepas habis bengkel. Hidup link itu selama setengah jam saja. Lepas setengah jam dia akan tutup secara automatik aku. Okey, oh, ni paparan dalam komputer, dalam PC ataupun uh, laptop. Kalau cikgu pakai telefon, uh, telefon ke, tab ke, uh, note ke, uh, iPad ke, kira -kira benda pun, yang jenis fung-fung tu, tajuk ni, hujung sekali sebelah kanan tu dia ada macam arrow. Uh, arrow yang ma macam V tu. Uh, v arrow. Uh, arrow bentuk V. Uh, klik O2 tu. Uh, klik O2, uh, ada keluar bahan dan keluar CJ. Uh, itu kalau cikgu pakai uh, telefon uh, atau tab. Tapi kalau pakai Nokia 3310, tak ada aku. Tak jumpa hari. Okey, selesai aku. Okey, jadi uh, kalau lah cikgu ada uh, kajian tindakan ke, ada kaedah ke, ada strategi ke, ada inovasi ke, atau apa-apa sahaja, apa-apa sahaja yang boleh memberi manfaat kepada Uh, guru boleh memberi manfaat impak kepada guru pelajar dan sekolah uh, cikgu cikgu jangan segang jangan malu mesej hamba uh, kita akan cari target cari uh, hari cari peserta untuk beri peluang kepada cikgu untuk bentangkan cikgu punya uh, PAT itu uh, amat terbaik tak kira lah cikgu ni sekolah rendah ke PPKI ke prasekolah ke sekolah menengah ke menengah atas ke menengah bawah ke tingkat tanang ke Uh, universiti ke, college ke, IPG ke, matikulasi ke mana-mana lah kira lah okay, so, yang pentingnya cikgu ada benda, benda yang molek benda yang bagus, benda yang mantap yang boleh beri infak kepada guru pelajar sekolah mesej hamba, uh, kita akan cari uh, peserta, cari penonton uh, untuk beri peluang kepada cikgu untuk bentangkan cikgu punya uh, AT itu, awal terbaik ok Nanti cikgu CJ tu pastikan email betul ah. Ha? Uh, pastikan AJ email betul, AJ ang tu kan betul guru. Jangan salah. Dan juga KP pun pastikan betul. Untuk email ni semua terlibat pelajar ke ibu bapa ke guru ke semua terlibat guru. Pastikan email betul. Manakala untuk uh, KP ini yang terlibatnya hanyalah warga KPN sahaja. Uh, warga KPN. Uh, pelajar ke ibu bapa ke uh, tidak perlu masuk KP. Uh, tulis saja nombor 2. 2 2 2 siapa ke habis itu. Okey. Akhir sekali tu, uh, okay. jangan lupa subscribe uh, this channel, channel Tuk Sagar. Okay, untuk malam-malam cikgu pada hari ini, okay, pada hari ini kita telah menjemput, uh, menjemput orang hebat ni, uh, orang hebat uh, tetap masuk Inggeris, uh, Dr. 
Yusnita uh, PhD PhD dalam bahasa Inggeris uh, tu uh, topiknya bahasa Inggeris uh, telah uh, menghabiskan tesisnya dalam bahasa Inggeris okey uh, tajuk hari ni nak cerita ni uh, bagaimana kita nak uh, combine combine ni nak mencampur-campur uh, word dengan word dengan word dengan word akhirnya menjadi a sentence uh, tadi cik Dr Yusnita ada keadaannya uh, untuk menggabungkan, mengcombinekan word dengan word akhirnya boleh menjadi satu sentence yang mantap ataupun yang terbaik. Siapa dia tu? Dr Sita. Ah uh, Dr Sita SISC plus uh, di PPD Kuala Terengganu. Ah uh, dia ni uh, Dr Sita ni bekerja bersama dengan uh, SIP plus uh, Ustaz ABS. Ha uh, Ustaz ABS tu toke 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 ni toke Morih atau Bukit. Ha uh, okey. Kita pun tak nak buang masa lagi, kita pun ingin menyerahkan copong hamba ni, menyerah copong ini kepada Dr. Sita untuk menerangkan untuk berkongsi uh, amat terbaik yang dibuat oleh Dr. Sita. Dengan segala hormatnya dipersilakan. Okay. Okay, on. Okay, alright. Uh, Thank you very much to Dr. Saga. Uh, first of all, uh, feeling grateful to be able to be with you guys in this uh, Kongsian Amalan Terbaik, Guru Guru Malaysia. And my name is uh, Yusnita Mat Yunus. I'm an SISC Plus for Bahasa, Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah Kota Terengganu. Uh, so today, uh, I would like to um, do some sharing. A journey from a word to a sentence. Okay, a journey from a words to a sentence. Because I believe that everybody of us, we have gone through certain journey to reach this level. Okay, no matter where we are, we have gone through like a journey. Whether a journey is like a tough journey or a smooth journey, but still we are still in this in the journey. Okay, until the end of our life, inshallah. So hopefully for today's uh, sharing. Um, uh, there will be like beneficial, uh, like something like benefits to all of all of us. Okay, right. Thank you very much. So I shall proceed. So uh, uh, there is my um, a little bit about me. Uh, yeah, but uh, even though I, I finished with um, my uh, PhD in TESOL, but there are a lot, a lot more that I have to learn. It's like we the learning process is uh, endless. It's like an ending process, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Before I go into that particular topic, so we have to know that uh, basically we have uh, English language skills. So all these uh, listening, speaking, reading and writing are all the language skills that our pupils or our students have to master, okay? But for today's session, I will just talk about uh, writing. Okay, why do our children or why do our pupils learn writing? First, children become better readers. Children improve comprehension. Children think critically and children think creatively. Uh, there is none here. Uh, tak ada pun dekat sini yang cakap uh, nak lulus itu, nak lulus ini. Eh? But this is for them. Once they can master all these things, they have the reason why they learn writing. They will master, they will they will be able to um, do whatever. It's like uh, answering comprehension, comprehension questions and so on and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like a journey from a word to a sentence. Let's see. All right. I want to go straight to these three important steps. Okay. Uh, three important steps. Apa dia steps tu? Okay. First one, there are three important steps here. First, to having to, to be able to go through this journey, okay, this journey from a word to a sentence. First, uh, our pupils, our children, they should have this one, these three steps. The first step is related words. Okay, I will explain this later. The second one is part of speech. And the third one is sentence structure. They only need they only need to to go through or to to take these three steps only uh, believe me or not we will go through these steps together okay all right what is related words what what are related words what are related words so when we talk about words we talk about vocabulary actually huh? um 
when uh, sometimes when uh, when our pupils or our children cannot like write well, we say, oh, they don't have vocabulary. Oh, they don't they don't have enough words. They they are shortage of words. They are uh, a lot of and everything is about words, right? Everything is about words. So what is words? Words or vocabulary refers to the words we know to communicate effectively. Communication doesn't mean only oral, but also written form. So in general, vocabulary can be described as oral vocabulary or reading vocabulary. So oral vocabulary refers to the words we use in speaking or recognize in listening. And reading vocabulary refers to the words we recognize in print, okay, in text whatsoever. So we talk about words. Uh, because it's true, without words, our children, our pupils, our students, they cannot even write a simple sentence. So see how important words are. Okay. All right. So here is uh, how to get the related words. I just want to um, take you into this. This is my uh, actually YouTube channel where I, I shared uh, how you can enrich pupils or children's vocabulary from where they are. It's like they can get uh, vocabularies from everywhere. It's like from their surrounding. So here, uh, because during this pandemic, uh, COVID-19, and everybody has to stay at home, uh, so they cannot meet us. So this is one of the steps that we can help or we can ask parents to help us as teachers to enrich children's vocabulary at home. That means like even though they are not with us, they are with their parents, but their parents can help enrich their vocabulary or at least to strengthen their memories. See, memories is good because unless English is their spoken language, that's no, that is, there is no issues about that. But how to enrich the vocabulary to uh, parents, uh, you know, uh, we got uh, like um, comments from parents say, oh, how do we teach uh, English? Because we are not from English language field, things like that. No, it's easy. See, from, from the place in the house, from the place in the house, for example, in the kitchen, what are the words that they can get from the kitchen? They can be uh, um, describing the things, describing the people in the kitchen. They can describe the actions in the kitchen. Okay, this is the, okay let's, look, let's listen to this one. Just a short okay, this is to answer what they can see in the kitchen, things in the kitchen. Refrigerator, food processor, a pan, coffee pot, a dishwasher, and a few types of knives there. Okay, kita ada parry knife, butcher knife, stick knife. Uh, kita juga ada like cup, mark, napkin dan sebagainya. Okay, ha, ini adalah antara benda-benda yang boleh diperoleh. Okay, so these are taken from, actually this is taken from my uh, YouTube uh, video, okay. So this is like uh, you enrich your children's vocabulary from their surrounding, you see. Okay. I understand that we concerned about oh everything is on in, in the textbook or everything in the in the in the module whatsoever, but from their surrounding, from their surrounding, and reach the vocabulary. How many of our children really know each and every items in the kitchen? See, very simple. Parents can help. Teachers ask parents to help us. All right. So here are the actions. So listen to this action. See. Okay. Now let's move to things in the house compound. Oh, what sorry. are the things that? Oh, this they is can see compound. in the house this is, that, this is like... Uh, um, words like um, over. This is in the kitchen. All right, I think something wrong with the video. Okay, never mind. This is the actions in the kitchen. See, all those words are words that they can um, they can um, see. And like the actions they can see in the kitchen. Like, for example, the word... Okay, normally we say eat, drink, sit, close, like... You know, like closing something, do something, load something, mm -hmm. put something, and even scoring, you know, like... Uh, 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 when you score this using scoring pad, right? Uh, wash, uh, wash this uh, pot, for example, and then see the word fork here. Fork here is not is not um, the noun, but you know when you use fork to eat, so you are like forking, you spooning. See the words. See there a lot of words. I can see a lot, a lot of words in the house. Okay, it is not necessary that they have to be with us in the classroom within that four walls. They can get words everywhere they are. Okay, and then um, okay. okay let's, now let's move okay. to. Let's see. In, this is in the living room. Okay, what do we have? Okay, in the now we room? move to the living room. Okay, what are the things that they can see in the living room? Okay, uh, maybe there are words that. Uh, they are not familiar with. Tak apa, kita bagi saja perkataan-perkataan ini untuk tambah vocabulary. For example, the word recliner, okay. okay. Uh, Ottoman. Uh, 
even even sometimes uh, words like this are not familiar with us. What is recliner? Unless you have one at home, then you know what is recliner. And Ottoman, what is Ottoman? We thought we thought like this is like kind of like dynasty of the Ottoman, right? Uh, okay, but. Ottoman is is a bangku, a bangku yang kita boleh letak barang kat dalam. See, a very simple thing, but yeah, sometimes not they are, when they are not familiar. So this is the time. This is the time we like unlock their potential in getting a lot, a lot of words. Okay, all right. So let's listen some more. Hasuk mm. and Hasuk. also Thorak. Okay. Uh, right. So from from just from our home, see, we, they can explore, they can explore words. And these are the actions. And then we uh, move to uh, questions. What are the activities that they can do in the living rooms? See? So um, these are all the actions in the living room. Uh, for example, chat, relax. Okay, it may not be uh, the same from one uh, one pupil or one one child with another child. Okay, but basically, they we just ask them to be in that place and explore words, explore the nouns, explore things, explore people, and see like look around. What do we call this one? What do we call this one? Just ask them to 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 write in in in, in their books. Okay, and then later they will have to go and check in the in the in the dictionary, check in the dictionary, but not at that point, but they can write, even they can write in Bahasa Melayu, it doesn't matter because they know the words in their L1 because uh, they don't simply just write in L1 because they don't have words in L2. Okay, we have to understand their situation. We have to put ourselves in their shoes. They are struggling. Can you imagine when they are in the class, they are struggling to understand words. So let them explore, even if they put in, in L1, doesn't matter. Ask them to go and find it in the dictionary later. So it like strengthen their memories and strengthen their understanding of certain words, okay? All right, I'm, uh, so these might not be the same. I'm just giving you the example. If you want to know further about this, go and check on my YouTube channel. All right, so in, in the house compound, what do we have? Uh, okay, yeah. now let's move to things in the house compound. What are the things that they can see in the house compound? Uh, words like lawn mover, wheat eater. Mm, the word like wheat eater. We have never heard maybe. For some people, they say, oh, mesin rumput, mesin rumput. Actually, mesin rumput is wheat eater. Oh, so it's surprisingly, oh, that's wheat eater? Yes, because like eating the wheat, you know, like they are eating wheat. No, see, so um, yeah, for some people, they, they are not familiar with lawn mover because we don't have lawn uh, things like that at, at home, right? So all these things, it, it's not necessary to be the same thing, okay? Whatever that we have in the house, even if you ask them to go to the, like, uh, the storeroom, okay, just name whatever that you can see there. See, a lot, a lot of things they can get from there. But of course, why I, I suggest all these things? Because it related to their life. I always believe that when they learn in context, they will remember well. Is that related to them? It's like something like they own, they have, they see every day, things like that. Okay? It's not something like uh, something not familiar with them. That one we will go, but as the basic things, as for example, like especially at this point of time, you know, right? Everybody's staying at home, cannot go to school. And then we teachers in school, we are worried, they are lacking and they're like, they, they cannot remember words, uh, you know, like. Oh, even when they are with us in the class, they 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 are not easy, not easy for them to remember what's like. Let alone be at home without us in front of them. So, how to help? Ask parents to help. If you are parents out there, help your children. Help your children. Help your children. Enrich the vocabulary. Vocabulary because vocabulary is the first step for them to learn to write sentences uh, so that's that's the, that's about it okay so uh these are the the actions maybe the actions that they may uh, like play they chase each other like to chase the brothers and sisters they run here and there all right like a plant maybe like during this um this time and you you um ask them to like plant something even in the house so words 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 
Words are everywhere in the house. Words are everywhere in the house. We don't just trick, like restrict our mind, our 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 perspective only on the textbook or diction, dictionary. But they can get words everywhere, everywhere. When they open their eyes, they can get words already. Okay, start with this one. Ask them to go in front of the mirror and label themselves. What do we call this? What do what do you call it? What do you call this? Some some um some of them they are they're struggling they can they just know like head and shoulders knees and toes that's because they have been like uh they have uh, they have been uh introduced to that kind of uh, nursery rhyme what about that what about others it's not about uh, head shoulders knees and toes only or uh, eyes ears nose and mouth there are other other things other things that they have to know when talk about parts of the body hmm. it's very because sometimes they uh, you know like sensitive they have to know all the all parts because they when they read somewhere or oh, this oh, okay this is something related to the body or this is something like uh, related to my face for example right uh, who knows that this is the bridge of the nose so people are asking where is the bridge of the nose ah batang hidung ni apa mana pula datangnya bridge of the nose but there is it's a word and temple they only know temple but this is temple it's like between your eyes and your ears we call temple and I, sometimes I make fun with my, 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 I mean, I make jokes with my, my, my pupils so that they can remember. Where I, say, I say, okay, when you tampal, kok yo, okay, and tampal, tampal. So this is temple, you tempel, you tempe, kan benda tu. So it's like they remember, oh, okay, all right. It's like, it's like other related sikit tempe dengan temple. Okay lah, they can, they can associate. Ha, the word is association, associate words with experience associate with them okay <laughs> them that's 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 important right all right okay. so now i want to move to parts of speech uh, part of speech when, the, when we talk about parts of speech oh this is another oh my goodness just now related words okay now part of speech how many parts of speech oh eight part of speech how can my children or how can my pupils remember all the eight hmm Okay, of course, the level, the level will be different. Okay, if you are in, like, you are teaching uh, a primary, uh, uh, like, level one primary, the level will be different. Uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, what is that? The, tahap uh, dua, uh, level two, and then you have a primary, uh, uh, sorry, secondary, uh, upper and lower secondary, things like that. Even in university, I would say, Wherever you are, you will never get away from part of speech. Uh, even you go to university, you still learn part of speech. Uh, something that we have already learned in our school. So we are already master. Is it? Uh, the more you learn, the more you think that you need to learn more. It's like, it's like never ending. The level. The things are there, but the level will be different. Maybe the choices of words, the examples given, but... They're part of speech, no matter where you are, no matter at what level. Part of speech, uh, the important things that you have to know. Okay, okay. What are part of speech? All right, I am. I'm going to show you the 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 relate. Uh, what is that? Um, the relationship with the parts of a car. Okay. What are the parts of a car? I do not know. Recently, I am very much into cars. I do not know because maybe because I cannot go out. And then uh, my recent um, YouTube uh, video, I talk about adverbs. Uh, I just go into my, I just went into my car and just like I did my video there. It's like uh, at least to get something. All right. So this is what are the parts of the car. See what, what do we have? Part of the car. Hmm, we have roof. We have uh, windshield. Okay. We have hood. Ah, hood. Ini pun confused. Kadang-kadang cakap bonnet ke boot? Bonnet ke boot? Uh. <laughs> this is confusing. Uh. I always tell people that last time we have uh, this Volkswagen where we put all the stuff in front. So that's why we say, okay, put everything in the bonnet. Yes, bonnet. But now everything is at the back. So it's boot. It's not bonnet. Okay. All right. Uh, headlight, tire, wheel, door, handle. So these are parts. When we talk about cars, what comes to our mind is all these parts. Mesti kena ada cukup lengkap. Okay? So it goes the same with part of speech. We have nouns, we have pronouns, we have verbs, we have adverbs, we have adjectives, we have preposition, we have conjunctions, we have interjections. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, our children have to learn all these things. Yeah. But 
you have to know how to teach them in context. I okay. This this goes back to inductive or deductive approach. Okay, so let's list this one of my video uh, last year. Let's let's listen to my video. Let's look at one by one. The word nouns here. Nouns is actually used to name people, animals, things, and places. There are also categories like concrete nouns and abstract nouns, as well as collective nouns. If you want to know further about nouns, you can watch my previous video about oh, kind of nouns. Promote. Can you promote? Pronouns promotion? are actually used to replace nouns, like the words I, you, they, we, he, she, and it. Okay, this is another tips that I would like to share because um, I like to have nursery rhymes in my class. Okay, uh, instead of um, asking them to um, memorize like I, you, they, um, he, she, it, the, all the pronouns, I love uh, to come up with like, um, a nursery rhymes that they can remember well. It, uh, if you can remember the the, the nursery rhyme, I uh, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? So I change that to are you they we? Are you they we? He she it? He she it? Ah, uh, see, so they remember. Okay, so every time when they got stuck in the class, I would say, okay, 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 nursery rhyme. Are you they we? That means they are in uh, one group. Are you they we? One group. He, she, it, another group. So this is like um, for them to, to, you know, like when you teach kids, you teach children, you, you will have to be creative so that they can remember well. So, you know, like sometimes they, they get confused. Why I know as and why why he, she, it, like singular. So, so I, I I further with, with, the, with the lyrics of the, the nursery rhyme, I would say, okay, are you there? We, are you there? We, he, she, it, are you there? We, plural. Are you there with plural? He, she, it, single, single. So, single. So, they were like, oh, okay. So, every time sometimes they got stuck um, in the exam, they would say, oh, okay. So, it's um, it's not weird for my students to like mystery rhyme in, uh, in, the, in the class. Okay. So, just as long as they can remember, we have to think everything in the world to help them. Okay, so that is about pronouns. Uh, okay, let's see uh, verbs and adverbs. I think this one is um, so very important, very simple. While verbs, verbs are action words. Verbs are action words. Adverbs are used to modify verbs. For example, he walks slowly slowly is an adverb modifying the way he walks another part is adjectives adjectives are used to modify nouns or pronouns. For example, a pretty girl. She is pretty. The word pretty here is an adjective modifying a noun. Pretty here modifying pronouns. 
Okay, let's look at prepositions. We have prepositions of place, times, and directions. For conjunctions, we have fanboys. Fanboys, F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. And interjections is actually words with exclamation marks like wow, aha, alas, and etc. Okay, so basically that's about, you see like... Uh, now let us look at the same. Um, you, you can just like um, giving very simple, but you can touch on all um, grammar aspects. Okay, all right. So let's listen some more, how I can relate this with like words, okay? So here, in the supermarket, this is a team or a situation where we have to explore P-A-T-D, people, actions, things, and descriptions. So based on the words here, based on the words here, based on the related words here, we can also relate with the parts of speech. Let's look at the first one for people. Customers, supervisors, cleaners, managers, salesmen. All these words fall under nouns. Nouns for people. Where for things, things they may see in the supermarket like books, rows of shelves, canned food, milk and clothes and of course, a lot more, all these things fall under nouns for things. For actions, words like search for, choose, buy, sell, queue, ask, and walk, these actions are actually verbs. While for description, it covers or they covers two parts of speech, adjectives also, and also adverbs. For the word like busy, crowded, noisy, polite and careful, there are adjectives. While the word like fast, early, politely and carefully, there are adverbs. Right. Then, okay, uh, we have some more. The topic for this sample is taken from Unit 1, Year 6 textbook. The topic is reading a window to the world. The situation is in the library. The related words are also related to parts of speech. We can see there are nouns for people like headmaster, pupils and teachers. While nouns for things, we can see words like counters, shelves, books and chairs. For verbs or action words, we can see words like kill, borrow, lend, and arranged. The description help our children to understand adverbs and adjectives like tidy and neat for adjectives while quietly for an adverb. So where does this preposition come from? It comes from the theme or situation in the library. By finding related words, we have already covered four to five parts of speech automatically. Nouns for people, nouns for things, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and preposition. Let's look at other examples that you can explore with your children. This is the second sample with a topic, Appreciating Others. This is taken from Unit 2, Year 6 textbook. This is the sample with a team or situation at the playground. Okay, I think that's it. All right. Um, I, I could also see the comments there. Um, it's not are uh, you, they, we, it's I. I, you, I, you, they, and we. Uh, I remember I did, um, I was invited by my friends in one of the schools in, in Kedah and it was so, uh, it was so funny because um, when I, uh, ex uh, when I, I did this with the, the kids and then they say, oh, uh, you, Dewi, they are referring to their friends and it happened that she, her name is Dewi, Dewi, so they said, they say, are you Dewi, so they changed, see, our children, they are so, so creative, instead of using like I, you, they and we, because because of their friends, 
uh, her, her name is Devi, D E V I, and then they just change. Are uh, you Devi? Everybody's everybody like sang to this girl. It was so funny. See, they can just come out. You ask them, they can do anything in the world. Mm, see, all right. So this is basically how you can get words without yeah, mm -hmm. having like a lot of pressure. Mm, a lot of pressure. It's not not no pressures at all from the words, from the words, and see from the teams. That's why I I. I started by sharing uh, with you the word in the kitchen. So they can imagine. So what are the words? What are actions? So actually, they have covered like four to five part of speech. Mm. See, that's not difficult at all. You can try. Mm. You can try. All right. So we are moving to sentence structure. Uh, we are moving to sentence structure. What is sentence structure? Okay, just now, it's very easy. From the place, you explore the words. And from the words, you divide into which one? This one is the nouns, this one is the verbs, the adjective, adverbs, and preposition, maybe. So see, we covered a lot of it. Now we have all those things. How about sentence structures? Okay. Ah, this is another thing. What is this? Ah, remember this. There are five basic sentence structures. We don't have to go like, okay, think about simple complex compounds. Uh, uh, in in Trenganu, uh, uh, we call it. I I always uh, like mix. I, I make jokes with my my pupils. I say, okay, koho uh, pelet. means strange, right? They will say, oh, ayat koho pelet means complex. <laughs> it's not koho pelet. Masih maksudnya dekat sini macam makin lama makin macam weird, weird, weird. Uh, I say it, it becomes weird because your sentence is like go hair wire antah apa apa you je yang faham. So. Start with five basic sentence structures. Five basic, only five basic. You can try. If you are teaching uh, like low achievers or like mediocre, um, you can try this one. Who said that they cannot write? They can write a very simple sentence. Okay, we are going to explore what are the five basic sentence structures. Okay. Okay, there are five basic sentence structures. What are they? Subject verb. Subject verb object, subject verb adverb, subject verb adjective, and subject verb noun. Only five. Only five. Oh my goodness, there are a lot. Okay, let's look at number one. What, what is that? Okay, subject verb. The women smile. The word smile itself is called intransitive verb. What is intransitive verb? It doesn't need an object at the back to make it like meaningful a meaningful sentence. Okay, so we don't need, we don't need an object. See, subject and verb, that's it. Full stop, meaningful. Oh, okay, the women smile, okay. We can we can already imagine. Ah, see, and where to get, how to know. Ah, this is how they have to make an exploration sikit lah. Go and ask them to go and find the, the dictionary. The words there, see, no object. That means intransitive. Uh, right. Okay. Next would be, and uh, the first one, subject verb. The second one, what is that? Subject verb object. Uh, this one, it needs. It is a transit. It's like it needs object. The girls sell. Okay, sell what? You will. You will have questions. Okay, like just now, the women smile. Okay, no question. Okay, the, the women smile. The women smile. If you say why, uh, that's another thing. This is to answer question what. The girls sell. Okay, sell what? Uh, we, we will ask, sell what? So that means it automatically, this kind of verb is transitive verb. Sell the flowers. Mm -hmm. oh, the girls sell the flowers. The girls sell the flowers. Okay. And you can check. You can... Ask them to explore. We have digital dictionary. They can check there with object, which means that this is transitive verb. Mm -hmm. this, the verb is to trans. Uh, it's a it's a transition. You know, like to transit. Okay, this is subject verb adverb. My mother drives carefully. This is to explain how how does our mother drive. Uh, so my mother drives carefully. Do it carefully. Remember, I shared with you the video earlier. So it's like this one. Okay, everybody loves loudly. If you want to know further, I also share in my YouTube a video recently. It's about adverb. It is not necessary to everything should have ly. There are also verbs without adverbs without ly. 
So let's make an exploration. Go, go and visit my channel. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So uh, this is very easy, right? Okay. And then number four, we have subject verb adjective. The activity is interesting. The children are excited. This is also, we have we as teachers, we have to very clear about this. Why is it like interesting, not interested? Why is it interested, not interesting? So we have to remember to explain that to them in a very simple way. It's like to, whatever that ED, it should be the feelings. Whatever ING, it describes the characteristic, the situation. So the activity is interesting. And I am interested. So this is like, to, to relate, okay. But the idea here, the idea there is like to show how to use, okay. And the fifth one would be subject verb noun. The man is a teacher. So uh, basically just now the, the adjectives and also nouns, we just add, what is that? Um, yeah, the use of verb to be, verb to be. Okay, all right, now let's move to a word to a sentence uh, because that uh, I think uh, you can also refer this later, how to come up with, a, you can check, right, uh, the, the video later as, as a, your reference, okay? And if you have an, any ideas, you are welcome to my channel and like, give some ideas. Maybe we can have like, um, like sharing of ideas there. So a word and a sentence, okay, a word, da, 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 a sentence, you see? We start with a word, and then from the word, we explore the part of speech. And then from that part of speech, because we have known already, we go, we, we, will, we, have, we, we went just now, right? We, we, we go into that basic sentence structure. It's like words, parts of speech, sentence structure. Okay. Uh, yeah, sentence without word is nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So here. I would like to take this as an example um, from a, a picture. So the, the situation is a, a house on fire. See, from the picture, um, you, can, you, you can ask your, your pupils or your children to explore, explore. Like sometimes they think, out of, they think out of the box, okay? They think out of the box. They think out of the box. Uh, we, we may not, we may not, think but they can you know like come up words with like oh oh okay is it is acceptable something like okay surprisingly seriously so here people we have spectators we have victims we have passers by we have old woman where's the old woman or oh, there uh, see uh firemen like trying to help her and then we have actions what are the actions we have uh, like uh, witness witness uh, witness to see like to do to witness, climb, put up, put out, save, try, help, console. So these are these could be the actions that they can think about from the pictures. Okay, the pictures might be like small here, but you can get the big one and ask them to explore, think out the box. Never mind whatever words that they 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 like uh, whatever words that come out come across their mind. Let them just write. Okay, tulis saja, tulis saja. And if you notice, I I. I don't suggest or I I prefer to write in root words, you see? And ask them to know root words instead of past tense or ing. So confusing. See the word interesting just now? If we ask them to put climbing here or putting out here or saving, they might get confused with just now. Just now uh, is, is an adjective. Why? Why is it ing? You see? We do not want them to get confused. So ask them to list action words or verbs like the the base one huh? the base base word okay and then we go to things okay what are the things that they can see in the picture they can see leather they can see uniforms windows smoke water and hose okay what about descriptions oh safe panic relieved uh, efficient quick action scared so all these are you know that they describe the situation all right as a teacher, you don't expect um, to have our children to know everything, one at a time, one at a time. Today, the same picture, people. Tomorrow, the same picture, actions. So they can, you know, like they can, you know, like their schemata, 
Uh, we talk about their memories they nak simpan lama dekat sini. Uh, so they can, oh all right, okay, so today we talk about people, today we want to talk about actions. So sometimes we expect them to do a lot of things. It's like sometimes too much for them. You have to be empathy. I always feel like it's not because they do not want, but they cannot, they, they don't have with them. So be empathy with them. So ask them to explore, ask them to, to, to we help them. We cannot expect, okay, yang tu pun tak tahu ke? Oh, that's like, I, I, I really cannot accept that kind of, oh, yeah. no, because they do not know. How many of our children, they want to be teacher's pet. They like to be. In, 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 in fact, they, they feel jealous if you have like, they are like teacher's pet in, in, the, in the class. It's good to hear, it's good to hear. But believe me, they want it, they want to be one of them. <laughs> But they, they, they are like struggling. So help them, help them, help them, help them. Okay, all right. So only for this, these things. I remember when we talk about people, we talk about nouns for people. When we talk about things, we talk about nouns for things. When we talk about action, actually we are talking about verbs. When we describing, it can be adverb, it can be adjectives. You see, we cover everything. We cover everything. Ah, very good, right? Ah, see, and then okay. I love. I I could see the comments here talking about verbs. A, a sentence without verbs, nothing. It's true because it is a heart of a sentence. A verb is a heart of the sentence. A verb is the heart of a sentence. Remember that. That's why um, sometimes, uh, you know, like as an S I S C plus, um, yeah, we we share uh, like. Uh, best practices or, or based on our experience, we mentor, we coach, right? Okay, I, I could see that teachers love to start with by giving a table, the, the blank table, right? S, V, object, but it is not necessary to have objects at the back. It, it can be like, it can be like prepositional, prepositional phrase, it can be like adverbial phrase. So that's why I always leave at, like at the back there, subject, verb, The complement. It's like mm. to complete the sentence. No issues. Or else they will question us. Is it object? For example. For example, I go to school. The word to school, the sentence to school, they will come and ask you, is this an object? So mm, we make that we will make them even more like confused, confused, confused. So I would just focus on verb, verb, verb first. Because it's the heart. Kalau hati tu baik, baiklah orangnya. <laughs> it's like kalau, hat, kalau ayat tu, uh, verb tu betul, betul lah ayatnya. That is, I always have that. The principle that I always instill into my children's, um, yeah, children's, uh, in, ch in my children's, uh, I would say. Okay, okay. let's start with the heart. Why? That's why when I, um, like, demo, uh, when I meet demonstration or simulation, I would start with blank, blank paper. I will ask them to list all the verbs in the middle first. Verbs first. Get the verbs, get the heart first. Uh, and then only you go into, I'll show you after this. All right, so start with the heart. Verbs, action words. I'm, I'm focusing on the pictures just now. Climbs, see, I, I start with climbs. And then puts out. And then try to save. Help to console. Witness. Climbs, puts out, try to save, helps to console and witness. Hmm. See, I, I start with, mm. with verbs. And then only these words, uh, you know, see, the words came in. A fireman, okay, climbs the ladder. Another fireman puts out a fire. They try to save an old woman. They help to console the victim. A group of spectators witnessed the incident. You see? Okay, back to this one. Yeah, this is the thing. Start with action and then you expand, expand, expand. But it should come from here. It should come from here. Sometimes when I talk to children, I will say, okay, do you have, um, show me your heart. They say, oh, I cannot show it inside. Sometimes we make like, jokes with them, right? It's in, in, inside here. Okay, do you have heart? What happens if you don't have heart? You said die. Yeah, if you don't have the heart of the sentence, the sentence will die. Ha, dia kena ada nyawa kat situ. Tak ada, tak ada jantung. Tak ada jantung. Tak ada jantung. Ha. So it's important. 
So I always tell my the, the the children. I always say, okay, where's your heart? You have do you have heart? Yes, we have heart here. Okay, what happened if you don't have? Die. So what happened if there, there's no verb in the sentence? The sentence die. The sentence die. The sentence dies. Okay. All right. So that's that's how I start with the heart of the sentence. The heart of the sentence. Okay. Here the situation. A house on fire, nouns for people, just now, right? Uh, nouns for people. We have victims, passers by, old women, firemen. Uh, and then we have verbs, uh, climb, save, try, help, console, witness. Uh, and then we have, what is that? Um, um, uh, water, smoke, wind, window, uniforms. Description can be scared, efficient, relief, right? Okay. This is just like, just now. Because um, we want to understand, right? That's why I'm using the same thing so that we can understand. If I use this not similar thing, you get oh, tadi cakap lain, cakap lain. So it's better. It's better for us to focus on one, and then you can improvise. No problem. All right. What happened? Okay, let's listen to this. Based on the situation earlier, we can come out with two short paragraphs describing the situation using only simple basic sentence structure. Yesterday, a house was burning. An old woman was in the house. The firemen rushed quickly. They took quick actions. One of them consoled the woman. She was scared. Another fireman climbed the ladder. They helped the woman. They worked fast. Everybody was efficient. The spectators were the passers-by. They witnessed the incident. They waited. All of them were panicked. They were relieved. The firemen extinguished the fire. They saved the woman. First, let's look at this word, yesterday. Because of the word yesterday, which indicates that the actions happened in the past, we have to make sure that all the verbs used are in simple past. The words in circles are verbs in simple past. Remember, these are the heart of the sentences. They are important. Now let's look at every sentence and see what kind of structures are being used. Okay, so, oh, not yet. <laughs> okay, so let's let's look at this one. We, first we get the words, we get the words, and then from the words, we, we can uh, like differentiate the parts of speech. And then from that, from those words, we learn how to come up with five basic sentence structure, SV, SVO, SV adjective, SV adverb, SV noun. Okay, so basically, these two paragraphs, they are all those five basic, I mean, they are just that, we just use that five basic sentence structure. See, the first one, subject verb adjective, a house was burning. Burning here is an adjective ex explaining the situation, the, the, the situation of the, the house. It's nothing to do with uh, past continuous. Hmm. Because we are referring to uh, an adjective here. Okay, it could be, it could be, okay, it could be. But remember, um, I introduced you a very like simple five basic sentence structure. Hmm. So, uh, subject verb adjective, and then an old woman was in the house. Here, slowly, slowly, I introduced the prepositional phrase there, in the house. 
prepositional phrase in the house. That's why when you introduce words, you don't introduce like only one word, but should be phrase, right? For example, we don't say apple. We say, oh, a red apple. So that a red apple is easy. Okay. All right. And then the firemen rush mm. quickly. So the word ad quickly, they're actually modifying the word rushed. So the firemen rush quickly. They took quick action. Quick action is an object. They took or took what? Quick action. Uh, always ask questions. Kalau ada intransitive ke transitive? One of them consoled the woman. One of them. The subject, right? So uh, at the same time, we also let them know. Okay, one of them. Okay, one of the firemen. We don't we, we don't look at firemen, but one only one. For example, consoled the woman. She was scared. The word scared there, nothing to do with past tense, but scared is actually the feeling, the feeling of the, 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 the old woman. See, she was scared. Subject, verb, adjective. Three words only, three words, make it one sentence. Perfecto. Another fireman climbed the ladder. They helped the woman. The, they worked fast. Hmm. Another three sentence, make one perfect sentence. Three, sorry, three words make a, a, a perfect sentence. Everybody was efficient. Mm, adjective. And then uh, the spectators, uh, the spectators were the passers-by. The spectators were the passers-by. This is subject verb noun, remember? The five. They witnessed the incident. You see, this is object. Because the word witness is, uh, is transitive. That means it needs object. Huh? You can check in, in the dictionary. They waited. Subject verb. The word waited. They waited. Two words only. This is subject verb. And this is intransitive verb. The word wait is intransitive verb. That means it does not need any object at the back. It's already, um, yeah, it's like perfect. All of them were panic. The word panic is adjective there. Um, and then we have, they were relieved, they were relieved. Uh, they, the fireman extinguished the fire because extinguished is transitive, need something else at the back, okay? They saved the woman. So this is basically from those this words, we come up with a sentence, we come up with sentences and now we come up with a paragraph. It's actually a journey from words to sentence to paragraph. See, very simple, as easy as A, B, C, one, two, three. Believe me, they can do it. And then from these paragraphs, uh, exploration, exploration, exploration again. What is that? Get all the all those words like adjective with ed, 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 so that they will remember. Okay, because sometimes they thought like the word tired is a verb because of ed. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I feel guilty. Maybe I feel guilty. Oh, kita lah yang cakap. Kalau past tense tu ada ED. And then every, all the words, excited, exhausted, everything. Dia hantam saja semua jadi verb. You see? Mm. Uh, so this is the way we explain to them. All these words are not mm. verbs with ED. But all these are adjectives telling the feelings. And then ask them to come up with the words. Oh, they say, oh, I'm, I'm so excited, uh, exhausted, all those words. We, and then ask them to uh, to list, uh, to list down. And then, you know, like when they understand, they will remember well. Uh, they will remember well. Okay. And remember, um, uh, I always stress that, I, I, I mean, normally I would stress that good reader makes good writer. A good reader makes a good writer, no matter where where you are, at what level. If you don't read, you have difficulty mm. in in writing. That's that's what I I can say. All right, all right. It's either we have that flip classroom. We talk about flip classroom. Can we do it during PDPR? Yes, of course we can. How? Give this them. Give to them this these sentences first. Ask them to read. Okay, first we say, okay, read, and then uh, tomorrow uh, during our class online, okay, we'll talk about what are the subjects here. 
don't ask them to to label all these parts of I mean, the, all the structures, everything. Don't let them like. Don't give them pressure, please. They will not learn if they get pressured. They love, they enjoy the lesson when you put some love in, into into it, some en- excitement, some you know like something to enjoy. Okay, so you just ask them to okay identify all the subjects. I put as and then ask them to take pictures and to you. And then the next day when you have your own like a class, record lah sikit. Nah, I understand the situation is not necessary that, yeah. Sometimes maybe like oh difficult the the uh, the pupils are not there and what's the point of like sometimes we are waiting we wait for them and they are they don't exist. Don't don't. Of course you do for the sake of our the, the children, but. You do it for yourself. You do it for yourself. It's okay for you if you want to record yourself. It's okay. Record lah, seorang seorang tak apa. And then post them. Post to them. And then they will say, oh, okay. And then and then ask them to do the same thing. Okay, uh, ask them to do the same thing. All right. Okay. Um. To summarize, I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done because it's already like one one uh, one hour, right? Okay, so uh, this to summarize, there are three steps. There are three important steps from a word to a sentence, and then actually, I I'm uh, actually I gave you like some bonus. Huh? I I gave you a bonus, not just a, a sentence, but a paragraph. Not just a paragraph, two paragraphs. Ah. Uh, Okay, and then, oh, oh, thank you, not yet. Okay, look at you. Uh, there are three important steps. First, find related words. What are they? Just now, we explore. We really explore. We, we explore the, the, the people, the things, the, the, the feelings, the descriptions, the actions. We really explore. That's step two, no parts of speech. Hmm. Do we really need to, okay, um, uh, action, okay, um, pronounce? No, it comes naturally. It comes naturally when you make like exploration. And then two sentence structure. Start with five basic sentence structures. Start with five basic sentence structures. Seriously, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Okay. Pupils can explore words around them by answering questions like, what are the things that they can see? Okay. Uh, what are the actions that they can do? Uh, just like that, so from the pictures. And then the second one, pupils learn better all the eight parts of speech in context. Hmm, they don't have to think, oh, Allah, susahnya nak belajar ni grammar, Allah tak faham. Start with that one first, okay? So they learn in context when they explore a theme, hmm. a situation, and or with the help of a picture, series of pictures, and etc. Okay? Okay, you, you can just start with, like, I, I don't know anything in the world. It's like you just give them, what, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I cannot show you. I like, for example, I showed this on my video when I talk about, um, when I talk about what, huh? Adjectives. When I talk about adjectives. You can, you can watch on my, my YouTube channel. So I said, okay, this is a pen, this is a pen, this is a pen, okay. So what is the color blue? So a blue pen. See, a very simple thing. So they will say, oh, gel, apala. They can explore, believe me. Just a little simple, tiny little thing they can explore. They help you. All right. So, um, and then there are five basic sentence structure. Start with that one first. Start with that one first. I know, uh, I know you like to shoot for the moon. But remember, uh, we have to be realistic also, right? It's okay. We shoot for the moon. If we fall, we fall among the stars. No worries. Whatever it is, yeah. Everything should start with your heart. You have to give them love so that they will love. Why you are? Why you become an English language teacher? It teaches of English language because you love the subject. Because you love. How you want to? give this to inspire your people to love the subjects as well i i have a few a few mm-hmm. um i mean a few um my ex students mm-hmm. like my former students they 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 are now english language teachers okay i hope i i contribute i i did contribute something so that they they love the subjects yeah that's about it i think that's all Thank you. So you are invited to email me. You can go to my website, my blog, and then also uh, my YouTube. I, I've been like, lately I've been like,
quite active on my YouTube because that is like how I can help my teachers to to share some ideas. It's just like two, three, four, five minutes only. I don't want to have like long because um, I believe in quality. I believe in quality. It's like it's okay. And I've got so TikTok like repeated, repeated things like that. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Maybe back to Dr. Saga. Okay, terima kasih banyak-banyak kita ucapkan kepada Dr. Yusnita di atas penerangan yang cukup mantap, panjang lebar, yang jelas dan clear uh, tentang cara ataupun kaedah nak uh, membina ayat dalam bahasa Inggeris. Uh, tak tahu bokep, uh, cikgu Dr. Dr. Yusnita hajar dah macam mana cara nak memperbanyakkan bokep itu uh, step by step. Tak tahu mau ayat, uh, dia dah hajar dah macam mana nak buat ayat paling perfect ha, walaupun pendek tapi perfect tak itu okey dah ada je jadi nak tak nak je ha, itulah ha, cara paling mudah cara paling terbaik tapi kalau yang level tinggi tu dia akan adalah paling panjang tu itu level lain tu ni asas ni jadi kita nak beri kepada pelajar yang asas dulu ni ha ni asas ni ha, bila asas ni dah ada pelajar akan explore diri untuk memantapkan lagi di punya ayat itu jadi memang terbaiklah apa kaedah yang diajar oleh Dr. Insita kepada kita semua. Uh, Okey, hamba mau cari soalan ni. Soalan-soalan ni nampaknya macam ada soalan. Semua kata good sharing belaka ni. Good sharing, good job, well done semua belaka ni. Uh, jadi a uh, nice sharing, thank you. Tak jumpa soalan pun ni. Oh ni, ni ni. Uh, both our life as an English teacher ni nama dah tu semua mengatakan teruja thank you good sharing semua dah jadi uh, soalan daripada hamba kepada Dr. Sita lah uh, katakanlah ha, katakanlah tak jumpa soalan daripada, daripada audio ni katakanlah kalau yang nak mengajar itu parents uh, kepada anaknya itu jadi macam mana kaedah yang kita pakai di rumah? Kalau di sekolah mungkin cikgu tahu dah cara step-step tu di rumah parent tu. Seperti mana ke tahu kalau parent tu as a teacher, kita tahu lah. Tapi kalau parent tu as a parent, not a teacher. Jadi macam mana dia nak pakai ilmu ni, ni untuk aplikasikan ke dia doktor ke dia sang ke dia children ke macam mana tu? Okay, terima kasih uh, Dr. Saga. Okay, uh, I forgot to show you here. I got testimonial from parents. Um, you know like uh, when I come up with video macam mana nak uh, macam mana nak explore words in in the house uh, from my video i shared uh, how to enrich children's vocabulary at home so um, uh, a few like parents yang bukan cikgu pun dia buat lepas tu dia share dengan uh, like share the the video yang dia buat dengan anak dia it's like uh, hari ni dia masukkan dekat dalam uh, dekat uh, kitchen anak dia senarai semua and then And then it's so to senarai and then they had a spelling competition pula. It's like, okay, if you are not teachers, it doesn't mean that you do not know how to um, help your, it's like you have to know how to to help by exploring the words, okay. Suruh dia senarai dulu, senarai semua perkataan tu, okay. It doesn't matter, macam tadi saya cakap, boleh guna bahasa Melayu, ejaan salah pun tak apa, tak apa, tak ada masalah. Kita bukan nak test dia, yang penting kita nak experience kan dia. Jadi, dia sudah tu, okay, habis dah. Katalah parents tu bukan daripada English background, for example. Bukan cikgu bahasa Inggeris pun, kan? Okay, tak apa. Okay, sekarang ah pergi ambil kamus. Ha. So, dia, you just give a blank paper. Kertas kosong saja. Bawa pergi kat dapur, sementara kita nak masak tu, ask them to list down. Whatever that they see, dia pun tulis. Ha. Dah habis dah. Ha. Bagilah masa, janganlah sampai setengah jam kita masak, setengah jam kita suruh anak kita menyarai. Tak lah, lima minit ke, sepuluh minit kan. Okey, dapat dah. Dia pun kata, oh banyak tak tahu dalam bahasa Melayu. Tak, eh, bahasa Inggeris, tak apa. Tak apa tulis je dalam bahasa Melayu. Apa ni, apa ni. Ha, senduk panggil apa, dap, uh, periuk panggil apa, ni panggil apa. So, dia tulis je. Yang mana dia tahu dia tulis. Ha, lepas tu buatlah dalam bentuk macam pertandingan sikit macam ataupun kita buat macam reward sikit pun tak apa kata kalau ada banyak mana ha, mungkin kita nak bagi reward sikit. Alright. After that, let's say after 5 to 10 minutes, ask them to go and get their dictionary. Ask them to get their dictionary, ask them to list down. Okay. Whatever that they have written in Bahasa Melayu, ask them to find the, the words in English. 
ask them to copy. Okay. Ini kena betul-betul lah. Kita pun bantulah. Okay, betul. Dia, dia, dia betul. Kita kita tanda lah as a parents. Kan? Lepas tu, ha, another step is buat spelling. Buatlah spelling competition. Contohnya kata, okay, sekarang abang pergi atau kakak pergi ngapal. Ha, nanti ha, mama nak buat ha, spelling competition. Ha, mama cakap bahasa Melayu. Tapi you kena cakap bahasa Inggeris dah ages sekali. Ha. Doesn't matter. Ataupun ada kan ni kita ada handphone yang yang kita type lah sikit suruh dia dengar balik macam mana sebut dia. So that is how we as parents we can we can take our responsibility ataupun we can also play our role to help them to enrich their vocabulary. So I think that that can help be of help. Ah uh, and and also if you need like few more steps on how to 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 enrich children's vocabulary go and visit my YouTube channel because it's like very short and simple. Uh, kita dah masuk adjective, adverbs, kita dah masuk nouns, uh, all those things. You just go and do things like that. Very simple. Okay, so a lot of people are doing this. The best steps before we proceed writing. The best step before we proceed writing? Hmm. Uh, the best steps. Okay, ask them to read. If they are, uh, give them a short, simple passage, short, simple passage, uh, ask them to read and then let them understand, uh, give them a pictures related to the story. Uh, this is very important. Kita bagi cerita, kita bagi gambar yang ada, yang dia boleh associate. Cerita ni, gambar ni. And then we ask them to come up with the, and then only then they can get words. The reason why they cannot be a good writer ataupun uh, can write well because they do not have words. Kat mana dia nak dapat words tu? From reading. If they don't read, they don't get words. So we want to help them. We ask them to read first. Alright, sampai dia faham cerita ni tengok. Ada tak kena mengena dengan gambar? And then only you ask, you give them question and ask them to write because they, they got already the idea. And that is what I can say. It's like good reader makes good writer. Okay. Terima kasih kita ucapkan kepada Dr. Yusita di atas. Terima kasih. Terima kasih juga Dr. Saga. Thank you so much. Uh, di atas uh, perkongsian beliau tentang keedah uh, ataupun metod ke, strategi ke, cara yang paling mudah uh, kita nak beri ilmu bahasa Inggeris ini kepada kita punya uh, Awal doktor ke, awal san ke, salah. Awal student ke. Tadi uh, doktor Ustaz dah ajar dah step paling asas. Uh, kalau tidak ada roket tu, apa pun dia kita kena buat uh, untuk memperbagaikan, memperbanyakkan roket itu. Uh, dah ajar dah. Dan bila dah ada roket, uh, buat ayat paling mudah. Uh, artinya, uh, daripada asas tu, dia akan belajar sendiri untuk uh, more, 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 more like dia punya step terms tu. Okay. Uh, untuk cikgu-cikgu yang ada lebih kurang dekat sibu dua orang ni, Uh, cikgu boleh aplikasikan Aplikan uh, Cikgu uh, Dr. Yusita punya metod ini Punya keadaan ini dalam uh, Subjek masing-masing Keadaan masing-masing lah BM ke atau bahasa Arab ke uh, Bahasa, mula bahasa lah uh, Ambil uh, keadaan Ambil strategi yang Di showkan oleh uh, Dr. Yusita uh, untuk Buat pada subjek masing-masing Uh, oleh kerana ini bahasa Inggeris, uh, mungkin dia uh, valid dengan bahasa Melayu, bahasa Arab atau bahasa Cina, uh, lebih kurang satu-satunya lah. Tapi kalau untuk sejarah atau matematik itu mungkin itu sesuai. Tapi kalau cikgu rasa boleh sesuai, modify saja boleh itu. Tidak ada masalah. Yang pentingnya, kita nak beri pelajar kita uh, boleh menguasai uh, semua subjek yang ada di sekolah. Uh, impak sekali, keluar dari sekolah, uh, dia boleh uh, speak English very well. Okay. Uh, cikgu, Uh, amba ni ustaz aku, ha, sedikit nak uh, bagi announcement lah. Amba ustaz, uh, amba punya diploma Theology and Philosophy. My degree in Theology and Philosophy, Pasapoh. My master in History of Islamic. My PhD also in History of Islamic. Dan I ada CJ Guru Pakar PJ, uh, uh, apa benda ni, dan Pito bahasa Inggeris. Dan bila pergi ke sekolah, dipaksa mengajar bahasa Inggeris ha, sebab ada lesen, ada lesen ha, untuk uh, kita mengajar bahasa Inggeris. Dan kita uh, research ke, 
uh, bahan-bahan untuk presentation ke ketika master PhD buku-buku semua in English tidak ada bahasa Melayu uh, jadi nak tak nak cikgu kena faham uh, bahasa Inggeris juga ok uh, ada orang uh, ada orang dia suka speak English very well anytime everywhere speak English uh, tapi I tak suka I cikgu cerita talk with me in English but I uh, answer that question in Malay <laughs> <laughs> also if I uh, cakap bersarap mungkin cikgu sarap batu uh, sebab dalam masa sama, I also boleh teach in Arabic. Ha, ada tiga bahasa ni. Bahasa Melayu memang bahasa dah. Bahasa Inggeris pun ada, I ada sehingga untuk mengadu bahasa Inggeris. Dan bahasa agak pun memang kita punya uh, unit sedar kan uh, Arabic. Ha, jadi boleh cakap belaka. Tidak ada masalah. Dr. Gah, ha. Dr. Gah. I'm from Al-Mashur. Mashur? Apa tu? From SMK, uh, perempuan Al-Mashur. Ah, oh, tu mesti ada Arabic itu. Sekolah Perkasaan Agama Perempuan Al-Mashur. Ah, dulu masa mengajar di mengajar di aku bunuh di Johor. Ah, lima tahun, enam tahun di sekolah Cina, dah tamir. Ah, ada ah, bahasa Cina kita tulis buku tu, bahasa tamir tulis kita belajar. Tapi bila dah masuk ke orang asli, belajar lepas orang asli. Ah, tapi bila balik ke Teranu ni, ah, kita tinggal habis lupa habis dah. Tapi Arabic, ah, English, Emily, ah, memang kita cakap lah. Kalau pergi ke negara putih ke, pergi ke negara Arabic, tak sesak insyaAllah. Ha, ha. Tapi uh, my apa benda I punya polisi ha, suka speak Malay. Walaupun yang cakap itu aku mesti ingat ke I answer in Malay juga. Ha, lepas tu lah talak I punya telegram semua English. Tapi I type in Malay. Dia answer in English. I speak in Malay. Tidak ada masalah. Yang penting kita faham apa benda yang ditanya dan dia faham apa benda yang jawab. Ha, itu. Itu uh, menampakkan kita punya kegembiraan kita. Jadi kalau kita pergi ke conference international, uh, English also in English. <laughs> kalau cakap Malay, mungkin kita faham. So, must be speak in English and English. Okay, kalau pergi conference Arabic, also English or Arabic. Malay cannot use that language because uh, dia punya uh, bahasa pantaraan English or Arabic. So, kena kena pandai kita menggaul lah benda tu. Uh, terpulang kepada masing-masing. Okay, go. Terima kasih banyak kita ucapkan kepada Dr. Nusista uh, pakar bahasa Inggeris uh, tesel-tesel tosol saya kira tosol tisol uh, tisol ha uh, tisol kalau bahasa Tianu English terangkan English ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, cikgu Nusista uh, satu soalan ni bernama mereka uh, according to my research ha uh, speaking of sorry ya uh. okey mereka kaji ambil ni uh, ada satu satu artikel yang dibuat oleh profesor daripada Universiti Malaysia Uh, mengatakan it's better kalau kita teach our children in language subject in uh, dalam bahasa maratang. Apa pandangan? Ha? Bahasa? Maratang, maratang. Maratang. Oh, ya. oh okay, okay. L1 lah maksudnya. Ha. Uh, okay. Alright. Um, okay. I, I want to relate to this context in the classroom. Ha? Uh, Ramai. Before, uh, before that, uh, I nak 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 explain sikit. Uh, my class, my class, okay. Okay. Uh, I teach you year one. Uh, what is your name? Okay. Jadi my student, dia, ah, uh, dia buat, ask balik, what is your name? <laughs> okay, oh, all right. Uh, how old are you? Uh, how old are you balik? Uh, jadi, uh, bila kita relate, uh, relate dia punya statement, paragraf dari that professor in Universiti Malaysia ni, mengatakan, It's better you teach a language dalam bahasa kita. Uh, this why I took uh, English. Jadi bila kita mengajar, ada tempat kita sebut bahasa Melayu, in, uh, setempat itu English. Okay. If, uh, kalau seseorang tanya awak, what is your name? What is your name? Jangan kata what is your name. Kena jawab, my name is. Uh, they combine Malay and English. So, uh, in uh, this situation, kalau refer kepada statement, uh, Profesor uh, itu, boleh kita mengajar bahasa Inggeris mengikut maletak kita, tinggi kita ni kepada budak. Supaya apa? Budak boleh kecap dan boleh faham bahasa Inggeris itu. Uh, lagi sekolah dia. Apa your, your comment? Alright, uh, thank you very much Dr. Saga. Okay, uh, the idea of the the idea of the pupils need to learn English because they have to familiarize with the words. They have to To, to listen to the sound of English. I always say that the sound of English because the only time and the only place they learn English is master class too. 
kalau uh, kalau dia tak ada experience untuk learn then they will not learn okay one thing another thing is okay ini ada isu juga macam-macam kadang-kadang cikgu-cikgu tanya can we teach english in our uh, mother tongue okay all right what are you teaching are you teaching the language or are you teaching the content Ah, uh, this is the two things. If you are teaching the language, if you want them to learn the language, you have to speak the language. But if it, it is about the content, for example, macam ni, uh, kita nak memperkenalkan uh, apa tu uh, content, eh, kandungan yang baru, kandungan yang baharu, um, dan uh, kita dah try. We, we explain in English but they don't understand. So you are allowed to you are allowed to, to to explain in bahasa after you have made an effort to explain in English. Macam tadi Dr. Saga kata, orang tanya dia, tanya balik. Orang tanya dia, tanya balik. Lepas tu Dr. Saga explain in 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 bahasa, right? Ha, so it is okay. It's okay. The only thing here, in English classroom, better all the instruction. Ha, yang ni kita nak tekan ni. Classroom instruction should be in English so that every day dia akan dengar, dia akan dengar, dia akan faham. Contohnya, okay, what day is today? Benda tu macam dia, every day. Every day dia dengar, dia akan get used to that. Alright. What what is the date today? What is the date today? Dia boleh, oh date, oh tarikh. Uh, tarikh ke cikgu? Dia akan tanya balik kita. Oh memang dia, kita pun tak, ah uh, yes. Dan kata, uh, what is the date today? And then we ask them to repeat the question. Doesn't matter. Ask them to answer among them. Alright. So okay, now uh, today we are going to learn this one. So they are familiar with cikgu ni memang dia akan cakap macam tu. Okay, what are we going to learn today? The idea is because we want them to experience the language. So all the classroom instruction should be in English. But in terms of content tadi macam Dr. Saga cakap, it is uh, it is acceptable. Sebab budak tu tak boleh, ha, dah jadi tak tak mencapai lah pula. Tapi lepas tu kita kena suruh dia repeat. Kita kena suruh dia repeat. Dua tiga kali kan kita ambil wuduk pun tiga kali kan Dr. Saga kan. Kalau kita ambil, kita buatlah tiga kali, tiga kali. Buat lagi, buat lagi supaya dia boleh mengingat benda tu. What is your name? Okay, this group, okay. What is your name? Ambil lah kad ke apa ke nama. Alright, what is your name? Everybody say, oh Ahmad. So everybody say, what is your name? So dia pun cakap, oh my, uh, uh, my name is Ahmad. So it's like they are, they used to, lepas tu bila Dr. Saga selalu tanya, dia boleh jawab lah kan. Ha, sebab memang kalau konten, kalau then wise i would say um i i i'm not bukannya kita kata mula-mula tu terus kita okey content pasal content kita kena bagi dalam bahasa Melayu tak you have to make an effort dulu mungkin bukan semua budak yang tak tahu mungkin ada budak yang tahu kan so kita bagi dulu yang tak tahu tu dia akan tanya and then we explain to them oh ha ni lagi satu kalau ada budak yang tahu okey now you explain to your friend ha so kita mem, kita bagi satu um, kata apa macam uh, peer, te peer teaching with the, the friends uh, apa bimbing rakan sebaya sebab ada yang tahu kita bukan daripada kita daripada dia uh, so we encourage them encourage them so i think that's if, if if in terms of content i would say it's acceptable acceptable lah kalau dah buat tak dapat juga and then we explain in the L L1 but later we strengthen kita kena mengukuhkan lagi lah mem 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 memperkukuhkan lagi lah yang tadi yang kata tak faham tu untuk diulang-ulang lah itulah yang, yang saya boleh berkongsi jadi keperluannya <coughs> walaupun budak tak faham itu sebenarnya bukan isu itu sebenarnya dengan cabaran bagi kita challenge to to us Uh, macam mana kita selesai ada problem. Uh, dan pernah suatu ketika uh, tahun tiga, uh, dua tahun lepas my cousin, my sepupu, anak sepupu dia daripada KL dia petah speak English. So satu hari tu daripada awal hingga habis kelas setengah jam I speak English. English. Sampai budak-budak lelaki tu tenang. Ayah tanya mereka, do you understand? Don't understand. Semua tak understand mereka. <laughs> That's why tadi kita kena cari keadaan cari keadaan, cari cara untuk biar budak faham apa kita ajar tu dan uh, carilah apa benda keadaan bila budak ada faham, budak uh, suka kita uh, budak memang suka cari kita ngajar, suka macam-macam lah Bud uh, budak akan dapat apa kita ajar uh, itu. so uh, sekarang ni, what is your name? my name is, how are you? Uh, blah, blah. what day is today? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, how are you today? Blah, blah. semua dah, dah, dia boleh apa isu sekarang ni pula, bila PDPR Takut balik rumah habis lupa. Mari sekolah, what is your name? What is your name balik? Ajar kalian itu. Okay. Cikgu Ustaz, Dr. Ustaz, Dr. Yusnita, Betty Mak Yunus. Terima kasih banyak 
uh, di atas kita punya uh, uh, platform kita ini uh, kerana sudi untuk berkongsi ilmu, berkongsi cara, berkongsi kaedah kepada semua guru di Malaysia walaupun Dr. Yusita uh, cerita tentang bahasa Inggeris tapi cikgu-cikgu yang di sana hampir kata tu boleh ambil kaedah, ambil kaedah untuk diaplikasikan dalam subjek masing-masing uh, especially in language lah, uh, Malay ataupun Arabic ataupun bahasa Cina, ataupun something like that. Tapi kalau yang another subject itu, up to you. You can modify that method untuk uh, sesuaikan dengan your school and your student. Oh, BI lah. <laughs> okay. Terima kasih banyak aku. Okay, nak buka link sekejap. Sekejap. Nak buka link dulu. Uh, okay. Nak buka link, okay. Link sudah buka. Pukul 4, pukul 4 setengah. Amba akan tutup link. Link ini untuk peserta saja. Untuk Dr. Yusita, link lain. Okay, semua cikgu tolong isi molek Tolong isi molek cikgu punya email tu Tadi pun dah ada Nazir daripada Kejap, nama mana ya? Nazir daripada Kejap, cari Nazir ni Nazir daripada Negeri Sembilang ha. Salah tulis email Dok balas kan Polong, 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 polong Tak ada Bila tengok Salah satu huruf saja tertinggal Habisnya keren So, make sure oh, Make sure lagi Sebelum lagi Okay, cikgu boleh molek-molek bahasa uh, email tu dia betul-betul. Jangan ada tak salah tulis. Kerana tak salah tulis, dia memberi kesan kepada cikgu punya uh, CJ tu untuk cari search dekat mana. Okay, no, uh, esok aku, uh, esok. Untuk esok kita ada uh, pagi dan petang. Uh, untuk esok kita ada pagi pukul 9.30 dan petang pukul 2.30. Pagi esok pukul 9.30. Uh, Cikgu Nok Ashikin uh, dari SK Taman Tong Dr. Ismail Satu. Uh, okay, KL okay, ni. Nok cerita, nok kongsi tentang teaching. Uh, teaching writing to primary school using ACT tools. Uh, Google Slide. Okay. Petang pula kita ada uh, Cikgu Nok Rizan uh, dari pada negeri uh, mana SK Alu Pongsu. Tak ikut kok. Okey. Dia akan bercerita tentang kaedah belajar fizik. Eh bukan. Sosok terus. Uh, kick pecahan triple M. Uh, kick pecahan triple M meningkatkan kemerahan murid dalam penambahan dan penolakan pecahan. Walaupun tajuk itu tajuk mengkhususkan tentang BN ke matematik ke BI ke bla 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 bla. Cikgu ambil saja kaedah itu. Ambil kaedah aplikasikan your subject ha, okay. dan modify untuk your student dia uh, setebal dengan your school dengan your student itu ok ok go uh, tiba sebanyak uh, pukul 4, 4 setengah untuk link go uh, jangan lupa subscribe my channel Dr. Saga Free Channel kita jumpa lagi esok pukul 9.30 pagi and evening pukul 2 setengah petang bye bye Terima kasih kepada Dr. Yusista, rakan Amber di SISC Plus. Nak tanya Amber ke jebat. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>